and it's Damascus, more than any other Arab city, that's been the centre of Arab nationalism. It's got a history of bitter struggles against Turks and French. Now every Syrian feels that the fight is against Israel and the West. The man in the street believes that recently the Americans plotted to overthrow their government, and the evidence is strong. In the cafes, politics are made. Syrians are certain that the West won't help them and that Russia is their friend. Does that mean that the Syrians themselves are becoming communists? Public opinion outside Syria is quite different from the uh, real situation here because the Americans and all the allies who cooperate with America are describing Syria to be communist. But they are quite mistaken because of many reasons. First of all, Syria is known to be an uh, Islamic country. And uh, we have many capitalists here, and they never think of communism at all. And they attack communism wherever they find it. And they are now being led by the simple leader, Abdel Nasser, who has <coughs> never been, I mean, uh, charged with the communism at all. Our policy is not different from that of Abdel Nasser. Is anybody yeah. here a communist? Are you a communist? No, I am a capitalist. You're a capitalist. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. Are you a communist? No. But capitalist. Uh, do, do you think that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you think that uh, Syria is in danger of going communist? No, I don't think so. In the prosperous quarter of Damascus, I spoke to three rich businessmen whose riches would be gone if communism came. Like everyone else in Syria, they're obsessed with fear of Israel. If you remove the danger of Israel, we might have time to think about the danger of becoming communist. I myself, I am called a millionaire, but I prefer 100 times to become a communist and not to leave the Jews, take my land and take my home and to throw me as a refugee to the desert the way they have thrown our brothers from Palestine. If you answer to a question that I will ask, are you going to attack us again? You mean attack anybody in the Arab world? Any of the Arab world, exactly. But don't you feel that perhaps Syria may have taken at least a partial first step towards becoming a satellite country by this recent economic agreement? Oh, good heavens, no. No satellites, we cannot become a satellite. We have fought our way to independence through a lot of suffering, and we're not going just to give it away like that for nothing. Which way did you vote at the last election? Well, among those for whom I have voted is Khalid Bugdash, a communist member of the parliament. Oh, we are, you are a millionaire. Why did you do that? Exactly because I am a millionaire, I have voted for him, because I am accused here to be pro-West, and my, all my good friends, they are from the Western countries. So many times we explain to them our situation. So many times we tried to correct their mistakes and they never understood us. So we thought, we thought that we put a member in the parliament in order that his voice will reach them and this will be an advertisement to them. Alarm them. Alarm and, and draw their attention. <laughs> in the bazaars and shops, there are a few pictures of Syrian leaders. It's NASA everywhere. What do you think about Colonel Nasser? Colonel Nasser? Yes. He's a great man for all the Arabs. What do you think about him? He is a good leader. He is a good leader for Arab states. <laughs> Nasser is our friend and leader, is the theme of this song, which the Syrian soldiers insisted on singing to me. modern arms from Russia. It's doubtful whether even their regular soldiers could use them effectively, nor could these volunteers who belong to the popular resistance movement. Every morning at dawn for two hours, these volunteers run round the streets of Damascus. 
They're practicing street fighting in case the Israelis or the West invade Damascus. Their employers have to pay for their time off work. They're very enthusiastic. The chief of staff told me that he was very proud of them and that they would be magnificent fighters. I'm not quite so certain myself. General Bisley, how many pro-communist officers do you think there are in the Syrian army? There are very few pro-communist officers in the army, and most of them are in the reserve. The army is dominant in Syria. It's not true that they don't interfere in politics. They've changed the government several times by force since the war. But this showroom was about the only sign of the Russians that I could find in the Damascus streets. Yaz, Gaz, Maz are all Russian makes of car. Uh, Mr. Tarazi is the permanent head of the Foreign Office in Damascus, and he's also going to be the Syrian ambassador to Moscow in a few weeks' time. Mr. Tarazi, why is it all right to take a loan from the Russians, but not from the West? Uh, in fact, the Syrian government has requested a loan two years ago from the International Bank for reconstruction and development in, in Washington. But unfortunately, the conditions of the bank were not acceptable for, by the, uh, for the government because the loan were, were, had uh, contained uh, some conditions which could be considered as interfering in the internal affairs of Syria. That man may not be a communist, but in England we'd call him a fellow traveler. But the ordinary Syrian agrees with what he says about the West making unacceptable conditions for any offer of aid. The government certainly has the people behind it. Here's the Prime Minister. He doesn't speak much English, so we had an interpreter to make a simultaneous translation. My first question, no communist. In so far as communism represents a social and economic doctrine, I can, without any hesitation, declare that the proportion of communists or communist sympathizers in Syria is less than anywhere in the other Arab countries. It is even less than in any Western country. There is only one communist member in our parliament which is composed of 144 deputies, while in France, for example, the number of communists constitutes a large proportion of the National Assembly and the same thing applies to Italy. Even in Israel itself, which is the spoiled child of the United States, the communist members of parliament are total 13. It is clear, therefore, that the prevailing false impression that communism is spreading in Syria has no foundation in fact. But how are you going to deal with the danger that you may get more Russian technicians here than you really want as a result of this economic agreement. I do not understand this fuss about Soviet technicians, nor the campaign directed against us. First, it has been said, we have become communists. This is not true. Again, it has been said that we have become satellites of Soviet Russia. This also is not true. Our relations with the Soviet Union have been deliberately misconstrued and distorted. 